This video is going to cover creating relationships in a Rails 7 app through an API. So we're going to have a parent and a child relationship or a has many and it belongs to where a book has many chapters and a chapter belongs to a book. We'll also cover how to create a book if the book doesn't already exist and you just pass in a chapter's body. To do this, we're going to need to create two models. So let's go ahead and make those real fast. We'll say Rails G scaffold book. Give each book a title and an author, both of type string, and we'll hit enter. Then we can run a Rails G scaffold. I'll hit control L to clear the console. I'll call this one chapter. I'll give each chapter a body of type text and a book colon belongs to, which will set up that belongs to relationship. Now we can run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate the database and a Rails S command to start the server because we're done in the console. We can now come over to our app, our models, and our book.rb. And in here we can say this has many chapters. I'll full screen this with a dependent destroy. So that if we delete a book, we also delete its chapters. We can check in on our chapter real quick to make sure it belongs to a book. And then we can open up our books controller and our chapters controller because this is pretty much the rest of the tutorial. We can start off by uh, creating a chapter and we can see what it returns. To do this, we're going to come over to an application like Postman or whatever you use to do API requests. And we're just going to try and create a chapter. So we're going to say uh, we have a blank canvas here with a chapter and each chapter has a, uh, I guess it has a body and we'll say it has a body of, of text or we'll say test and it has a book ID. And this is where you can already tell it's gonna fail because we haven't created this book yet, but we can still try it. So we'll switch this over to a post request. We'll go to the path of slash chapters and then we can come over to our headers. We'll uncheck the content type for text slash plane. We'll add in a content type for application slash JSON. We can now send a post request to the controller and we get back a book must exist error. So let's go ahead and let's try to create this book. I'm gonna comment out this chapter. I'm gonna uncomment this book and I'm gonna grab this book and I'm gonna move it to the bottom here because for some reason my postman doesn't like comments. We'll then create an empty object. We'll give it a book. We'll give that and uh, we'll give that some fields with a title of test and an author of Dean. We can then go ahead and send a post request to slash books. We'll make sure we send it to the right endpoint. We'll hit send and it creates a book for us. If we check the console right here, the insert into books is called. So we know that book exists. Let's now comment this out and then let's go ahead and let's cut this and we'll move it to the top here. And then we'll come here and we'll just uncomment this. And I'm doing the comments with control and uh, forward slash or the question mark. Now we'll try to create a uh, test chapter for the test book. Just make it a little bit different. We then come over to the slash chapters path and we can send in a chapter with a body and a book ID. We can send that and now you see here that we have a body and a book ID created for this chapter. The thing is, we're not returning the entire book. If you wanted the book at this point and your front end application was calling this, it would then need to make a second request with the book ID to something like, uh, let's say we can comment this out. We can pass in uh, ID for the book. We'll grab the book with an ID of one and then you'd have to come over to slash book slash one, send it. And that would let you get the book. So first you'd send the request for the chapter and then the request for the book. And that's two hits to the API, which is one too many. So instead what we can do is we can of course uncomment this chapter right here. And instead of just saying, give me a book ID, we could, uh, well actually let's come over to slash chapters and we'll try to grab the chapter with an ID of one because that might be the best way to show this. So we'll again put an ID and we'll grab the chapter with an ID of one. So I'll send a get request here. It returns that chapter. Oops, sorry about that. Now let's make it include the book. To do that, we can come over to the show. We can cast the chapter, I'll full screen this, to underscore JSON. And then we can do a include, not includes, a include of the book. 
So this is going to render the chapter as JSON, and then it's going to include the book that's associated with this chapter inside of the chapter RB because it belongs to a book. So we can now come over here and we can send in another request for the chapter slash one chapter. And now you can see it returns the chapter with a book ID, but then it also includes the book with its ID, title, and author. Now you could probably even do something like this. You could say, I wanna include a book and I want to include the chapters of that book. So we can do something like this. And now let's save this and let's see what happens. I haven't even tried this yet. This is just something I just thought we could do. And you can see here, we do actually get away with it. Let me full screen this. We can grab the chapter with an ID of one. Let me bump up the font size a bit. We grab the book of that chapter, and then we grab the chapters of that book. So, and of course you can grab the book of the chapters included in this book, etc. But you get the idea. So that is one possibility. I don't know why you would ever need it, but I guess now we know that we can at least do it, which it always helps to know things, I guess. So the next thing we could try is we could try to uh, do a create for it. But instead of doing a create with a new chapter, we can just try to create a chapter that doesn't have a book yet. So we're gonna uncomment this chapter here. We're gonna get rid of this book ID. And we're just gonna pretend that a user's creating a chapter for a book they haven't created yet. So in that case, what we wanna do is we want to, I don't know, we could say at, uh, at book is equal to uh, params and then we could grab the book ID, or we could even grab it from the chapter params, book ID. And then you could say if uh, at book.nil, so we have to do book.find by ID for this. So if the book is nil, then we don't want to render it. Instead, what we can do is we can say book equals book.create title of, uh, let's say, generated title, or you could even go with unknown like it was suggesting there, and we can give it an author of generated author. You can then say at chapter.book equals book and say end here, and we can even grab this at book and just assign it right here. There's no point in having two separate variables. So at this point, we can save this and we can exit out of this, come over here and try to create an empty chapter by going to slash chapters with a post request and clicking send. And if we come to here and we expand this, uh, we forgot to add an at here for our last book. So let's save that, run the same command again. And now you can see we've created that. And if we scroll down here, we should see that we first created the books and then we created the chapters. But again, we're not rendering this uh, book here. So how do we render the book? So let's go ahead and let's say, instead of doing a at chapter, We'll do a at chapter dot to JSON where we do a include of the book. You can do it the same way you did it up here. So we can save that, exit out of this. We'll send another create request. We'll create our third chapter now. And then you can see that this chapter includes a book with an ID of four, which is a generated book included inside of this. Now, what the a couple last things we could do is we could pop over to our Rails application by going to localhost port 3000, and we'll go to slash books, which will open up our books page here. Now, if you come to the books controller, what we can do is we can come over here to the at books and say at books dot to JSON, and we can do another include of the chapters. You can save that refresh the page, and now you can see this first one has an empty array of chapters, the second one has one chapter, this third one has another chapter, so on and so forth. Now let's try to go to a specific book, we'll say slash book slash one, and we'll also do a to JSON for that one, where we include the chapters, and then we can come over here and refresh the page, and now even our books are including the chapters. Of course, this would work similarly if your author was also a model, you would just then include your author. And then instead of having a author with a string, you would then have another object here that's just the author uh, and then that author's information. So you can see how you expand this fairly easily, uh, which is why I was hoping that this nested include here would work because it shows you how to construct this JSON object if you so desire. Uh, because this right here is basically how you would structure your data if you ever got to that point where you needed it structured like that. But let's say you don't want to include your author, you want to include your users. Maybe your users can be authors, 
but you don't know how to allow users to log into your application. If you're making a React application, I have an entire tutorial series that I've been working on that covers creating user accounts that allow you to log in and log out of a Rails app. If that's something that interests you, it uses the doorkeeper gem with device. You can log into the back end just like a normal app, or you can log into the API through your React application. So it supports both Rails and a remote client. It actually supports multiple remote clients through keys, which is really cool. But if that's something that interests you, I'll have a link to that video on the screen right now.